Hello everybody, what is going on? Welcome to the third KV with Python tutorial basics video. In this video we're going to be talking about the KV language. So this is where you might see these .kv files. Now, it's actually the case that you don't ever need to use the KV language. Uh, it's really there for, just for you, if that's what you want to use, but you can actually write the identical application using pure Python code. Uh, so as you can see here, we've actually, we've utilized some KV language, only we've written it in pure Python. But what you can do is you can use these .kv files uh, to maybe better organize uh, your presentation of the GUI and keep the Python files for the logic. So depending on which way you think you might want to use things separately, but again, it might actually be the case that your application or your program is simpler if you keep it all together in just pure Python, or uh, if you're using a lot of customization, or maybe you're using a lot of customization, but a lot of that customization is very redundant, then it would make a whole lot of sense to use the KV files. So uh, I think you can get it by using, you know, doing one or the other. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but in programming in general, there's a million different ways to do something and everyone has their opinion on what the best way is and they'll ridicule you if you disagree. Um, so <laughs> I'll go ahead and show uh, both versions here, but honestly, don't worry about what other people say is the best. Just try them both out, see what fits best to you uh, and use that. So anyway, that's what we're going to cover here is the Kiwi language. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and we'll, we'll get rid of this. We're not going to be using it for now. And even we don't need these imports anymore either. So this is kind of one of our our initial um, scripts, only the only difference here was this was label and uh, the parameter was text and it said hello world like this. Okay, So we'll save and run that and that was our original application if you recall. So uh, that's that and this is you know written in pure Python. Now what if we wanted to write this in, or at least utilize the Kiwi language? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Notepad++. If you don't have it, I highly suggest uh, you get it. You could write all this in just a regular Notepad file and then use the same saving practices that we're about to use. But anyway, so within your Kiwi uh, file here, what you can do is it's always a good idea to reference the file that you are um, kind of like associated with. Because as you'll see in a second, <laughs> the way that the Python script is going to know the .kv file to use is really kind of screwy. Um, I'm not quite sure why they went with the way that they went, but they did. So anyway, um, so we'll just say, you know, file name. And this is going to be uh, in conjunction with our kv video 3, for example. So kv video 3.py, put whatever your file name is. Um, you can require a kv version here by using the um, hashtag colon, uh, and then we can say kv uh, 1.8.0 and that will also put a requirement for the, the KV language file. So uh, now let's kind of consult here. Our, we've got, you know, simple KV app, we've got a label and it says text hello world. So you can kind of envision your KV files. Now I'm sure someone's going to like jump down my throat for this, but the .kv files are a lot like CSS, right? So it's a lot like having a style sheet, okay? And so just like with HTML and CSS, you can kind of write, you know, text attributes right in the paragraph tags, let's say, for example, and you can give kind of some style attributes to it. Or you can have a style sheet that says, hey, everything with a paragraph tag class article, right, looks like X, right, looks like this. Uh, or you can actually, you don't even need a CSS sheet, you could always just create custom styles as you went. Like we can see with websites, it makes a whole lot of sense to have a style sheet so you don't have to continuously keep using classes. Now, with uh, applications, depending on the application, if you have a small application or you don't have a lot of redundancy, it, sometimes it actually, I think, is a little simpler to use it within the application, at least for me. But um, again, it doesn't matter which one you use. Both of them are very effective and both of them will work in the way that you expect them to. So anyways, this is a KV file, KV uh, requirement. Now, how would we do this? Well, like a CSS uh, uh, style sheet, first you're gonna have you know the attribute, so to speak. So for us, it's going to be, we wanna say label. Now, what this is basically, it's a parent, okay? So 
this is referencing any time we use labels. So that's referencing right here. But you could take it a step further and add other attributes within here. And we are going to do that, but you could actually have a button or like other stuff within here and that would be a child of a label. So every child of a label with X attribute would be a certain way. But anyway, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, I'll, we'll show that when we get there. But anyway, so label one, two, three, four, just use the same kind of indentation practices. And then you can have your actual values here. So text, we're saying text colon. Uh, and then we can say hello world like this. Now that's it. Well, that's all we're going to add right this instant. And what we can do now is we'll go file, uh, save as. And I'm going to save mine. Um, We'll go save file type as and go to the very top and we'll say all types. So this gets saved here as like all types like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a uh, simple kv dot kv. Okay, so we'll hit save. And then instead of return a label and then specifying an attribute, let's just say return a label. So there's nothing else there. So we'll save that. And let's go ahead and run that and see if, if we work. No, we didn't work. Hold on. Let's see what it says. Uh, apparently, simple kv.k. OK, well, I guess it didn't want us to be all cat or uh, to do camel casing. Uh, let's go. Where? Oh, here it is. OK. So it was yelling at me for the camel casing. So I'm going to un camel case here. So simple KV or simple KV under like all undercase. So I called it capital S capital K. So for some reason it didn't like that. I don't recall that being an issue before. Man, it's still getting angry at me. Simple KV. I'm looking at it, man. I don't know why you're telling me you can't find it. Hmm. <laughs> Caesar's desktop, desktop, syntax lessons. Kiwi slash simple Kiwi. Oh, it's not a dot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Uh, simple Kiwi. Now I'm going to go back. I had used apparently a. Let's try this one more time. Uh, okay. Save and run that. There we go. Okay. So that's that's why okay so the the problem was actually instead of dot kv I hit comma kv apparently so the camel casing was fine I just reverted it back to the camel casing actually so now you can see we have our application hello world um, just the same as it was before it's just now we're referencing this label now before we move too much further I do want to show that uh, this one. Yeah, there's the comma. It's kind of really hard to see, actually, that it is a comma. Um, I'll just say no there, and let me open this up one last time. And interestingly enough, the Kiwi language is kind of like a, I don't know, a hybrid of Python almost. And so what you can actually say is text equals hello world. But what if we said text equals, for example, hello world and hello plus space world, let's say. So we'll save that. And we'll run it. And you still see that we have the exact same hello world. Uh, then what we can do is we can go even further. And we can do hello uh, world and uh, comma one plus one. Let's see if we get away with that. We're in untested territories at the moment. <laughs> Got angry. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, only accepts a string. Okay, that's fine. So anyway, we'll come back over here. Um, so that was a, that's actually a parameter issue. So let's let's do string one plus one. Let's see if we get away with that version at least. Um, oh, still angry with me? Are you serious? I converted it to a string. You you make me very angry. Um, Okay, well, apparently with our text labels, uh, it's very stringent as far as uh, that it just wants text elements only. But uh, when you're not, let's say you're not using the text element, you can actually incorporate Python logic on the other side of the colon. So at least you can see here with the plus, we've incorporated some 
uh, Python logic. But again, this one's very stringent and it only wants text. But maybe later I'll, I'll show you guys uh, some actual logic uh, within our Kiwi uh, language here. But like I said, I, I think the only reason you would use this .kv is strictly to actually separate the logic um, and make the Kiwi file just presentation and the Python file just logic. But anyway, uh, that's that. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.